Hey everyone, I'm Chris with Dream Studios. I am back with a new exciting video. I can't wait to show you, so let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to video number two of the Colin Cantwell Concept Star Destroyer project. Check this video's description to find links to this project's build blog. In the first video for this project, we explored this 3D model and discovered how it is separated for 3D printing. In this video, we'll dive deeper and have a look at the physical parts, which have now all been successfully test printed. We'll also take a look at the laser cut styrene hull set and inner frame. I'll conclude this video with advice on 3D printing orientations and advice on producing the styrene hulls. Let's start things off by having a look at the file set to see what's included. Let's go for it. If you're getting the digital package for this model kit, let me show you what to expect when you open up the folder. So here it is here, Cantwell underscore SD, zip folders. I'm going to open this up real quick and show you that we've got four folders in here. One of them here, Cantwell STLs. These are WinRAR files. They should open up automatically when you double click them or right click them and unzip them. Most modern computers will have uh, the unzip app on it. So we've got this whole collection of STLs, very clearly labeled, aft gantry. I've got versions here. There's an aft gantry with holes. There's an aft gantry without holes. Uh, we've got the large engine times five, small engine times six, spool, um, tower, truss, turbo, left, right, very clear labeling. Um, and when you open these parts, you can go ahead and inspect them. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the bridge main piece. And that opens up to this. Okay, so there you go. There's your STL folder. You also have a curated folder in here. In here, we're going to find photos of Colin's concept Star Destroyer model. Pretty much every photo I could find of it is in here. The other two pieces that are in this folder are the templates. One of them is something I added only a few days ago. It's the blue markings. So if you notice, there's these blue markings on the, on the sides. I might do that, I might not when I build mine up. But anyways, here's the PDF for those. It's the blue mark PDFs. And then the other one is the templates I've been talking about for the hulls. This is the most current version here. Um, it's all the pieces, the upper hulls, bottom hulls, the sidewalls, the bulkheads, everything is right there. All right, there are the contents of your zip folders. Let's move on. Let's have a quick look at this model. These engine bells back here, even though in this render, they're all one piece, these are all separate pieces. So you've got a large engine and a slightly smaller engine bell. By the way, these are made out of 1970s prescription bottles. Um, so there's one of each in the file set. So the big one, you'll print five. The smaller one, six. And as we cruise around this model, you can see how I separated these layers. I don't think I can, I'll do all the parts, but I'll show you a few of them. Let me take this guy up. So I can see under here, whoop. I can see under here that there is two keys on this red part rotate here and then those match up to these two keys you'll see that everything um, is not every single piece but a lot of it is keyed this is just to make assembly a lot easier see this bridge piece keys twice there and there and I, I prefer using this truncated cone shape it's very forgiving with size tolerances from different 3d printers the pieces that I have here in red, these antenna pieces, these are not 3D printable, too small. You're going to go ahead and use brass wire for that. The same with 
this green piece and this green piece not really printable uh, just go ahead and grab some evergreen styrene and build those just from scratch now here's something I'd like to show you so the tower has a pre-drilled hole let me lift this up let's back out here so I can lift this up so you're gonna see a hole that's here and that matches a hole that's under that tower so my plan for this is to use a piece of brass rod or a piece of steel rod aluminum whatever you have on hand and drive it through from here through here and once your hole is assembled just continue that hole all the way down in there to really root that tower. Let's lift him up. I've got two shallow keys because this piece is so thin I had to make the keys really shallow so they match right there those shallow pins. These are the side cannons. Let me go ahead and move this backwards. So you can see this will slide right in here and meet up at that corner. All of the trench details are not 3D printed. Uh, you're just going to go ahead and just use your kit bash technique for that. The holes, of course, I provide the plans for those. And let's talk real quick about how this is organized. So these pieces the I call these the quad cannon pieces Th mounts to the side of the spine okay so here in Fusion 360 I can click on a part and make it translucent so I can see the how this keys so the stack one stack two stack three all key to each other there's keys there that goes to stack two stack two to stack three is keyed stack three to the spine is also keyed with the brick though I can't see it there this of course I show pretty well in my video it's got two keys here to help you align that okay here is the forward building I'm gonna move him up you can see that he keys twice there this is the spine this is the front of the spine I'm going to move him forward so you can see that he's keyed here in the front. He's got a box key on the top. He has side keys. And if you look at my plans for the styrene holes, you'll see a mark, a little um, a mark cut out. That mark indicates the front of the spine. So the very front forward of the spine right here is where that mark is now when I talk about the spine I mean this piece right here this blue piece this is where everything stacks so you'll see a groove here that's where an important part goes it slides onto that groove this is keyed for one of the building stacks this is keyed for another stack basically everything builds on top of this which I call the spine and let me move this for you Let's move this guy up so you can see that he is contoured to fit that body line. Really important to follow those angles in my template folder. You'll find the um, PDF templates that you can laser cut. You can trace them onto paper, cut them out of styrene. Just make sure that this that angle is correct for that part to fit and everything else stacks on top of this. Really, Let me show you how to best print this one. I forgot what this is called in my files. I think it's turbo lasers left and right. But I've got them pitched up, as you can see. About 45 degrees, maybe a little bit less than 45. I thickened up those walls just a little bit, just to make a more reliable print. The gun's printed just fine. Everything looks absolutely perfect. So basically straight up and down with those cannons and then you pitch it to about I don't know that's probably 30 35 degree pitch but that is how you get a success on this particular part this piece is I think it's called stack number three 
I could be wrong. I think this one's stack three. This one is the piece that lives right on top of the spine. But here we've got a perfect print. This is pitched a little bit up, about 25 degrees or so I'd say, pitched up and then it's got a slight tilt on it on, Z, on um, Y. But great print, perfect, nice and straight. And these walls are just a tiny bit thicker. I thickened up these walls just for a reliable print so everything stays nice and straight. A little bit thicker, but we've got a really nice piece printed like this. But let's go ahead and preview a few of these things. I've made a couple changes. I've thickened up some of these parts since version 1. I know no one's actually built this yet, but I've already got version 2 of some of the parts. So these are thicker. This has thicker walls. This has thicker walls. I thickened the ends of the tape spool a little bit. Um, these are now thicker, um, but let me go ahead and show you the spine in my video animation from video one. You can see this being animated, but here it is in real life. Again, two keys for the bridge here, here. That locates really easily like that. We have five of the larger engine bells, six of the smaller tape spools, the rear Piece. I had to thicken this one up a little bit to make it more dependable. I had to thicken that. We have the tower under here. You can see that pre-drilled hole. That matches that pre-drilled hole. That would be for using a, a piece of steel or aluminum wire uh, rod. I'm sorry, goes through there into the hole. That'll be later. We have the truss tower, the tape spools. This guy that goes on one of the. Uh, bridge pieces I think, the guns, six of the smaller engines, engine details, cannons. Alright, there is the 3D printed portion. Here is the laser cut portion. We have four bulkheads. This is the backmost. It's a backer plate for this. Then there's this one, and then there's the baby one up front. We have bottom holes. The bottom holes are identified by this hash mark right here. This identifies where the largest bulkhead, which is this piece, and there's a T for the top, T for the top. So these guys will line up at that start point right there, that hash mark, and those are lined up during your assembly. And you'll see, you also can measure it with this guy here. This guy sits at the back of the ship and there's a little bit of a gap between the hash mark and this piece. Sits in these engines sit in really deep. So there's your bulkhead and then you got your medium bulkhead goes in the center, smaller bulkhead goes in the front. Really critical to make sure that these hash marks are the bottom hole back. This these two you will see have a notch here towards the back. Well it's kind of midsection but backwards and then a notch up front. So we see that here. So these guys are inside edge, top. So these will orient on the bottom like so. So just make sure that you're getting these hash marks correctly. The top hash mark on the upper hole, I know this might get a little confusing, but the top hash mark upper hole indicates the beginning of the spine. Top mark, that's where the spine starts. So when you're fully assembled, you look for that top mark, spine starts. Bottom hash mark, top hole, indicates where this goes. This is the uh, little riser, but the very tip of this riser will be about where that hash mark is. So a fully assembled hole, identify that hash mark, that's where these guys will glue on top for the riser. Um, this is not a tutorial, so I won't go into full on detail, but you can laser cut these on your own. You can have these printed and trace them onto styrene and cut on your own. They include the four holes, the four bulkheads, the plans for the front riser, 
The plans also include measurements for this. These are the side walls. If you decide to get all of this pre-cut by me off of my laser cutter, I will also include the PVC. This is half inch. This is the Charlotte pipe half inch. It's a half inch inner diameter, by the way. Um, so anyways, here's your skew number. Okay, so that is three pieces. So I will include, if you get this from me, the three pieces of half inch PVC to assemble your subframe, your bulkheads, and you'll get all these pieces precisely laser cut off of my laser cutter from my plans. All right, guys, that is it for my second video, my second introduction to the Colin Cantwell Concept Star Destroyer. Much respect to Colin, a tribute model for him and his contribution to the movies. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Makers, I appreciate your support. If you enjoy this content, feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to respond and like and subscribe, share if you like it, and I'll see you in the next video.